How's it going? This is Dan and uh, we're in my studio today and I've got a fun little exercise uh, for you to kind of work with and play around with that'll really help sort of put you into a more expressive set of mind when you're painting. So if your paintings are tight, over rendered, um, this is a great exercise just to start to allow things to happen in the watercolor, treat things as shapes, get out of this idea of a, of a linear sort of uh, process in, 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 in approaching your watercolor like a, a coloring book, uh, sorry to say. Um, and this is sort of the, uh, the end result of what we'll end up with. Um, but really what we're doing is um, it's just a way to look at the shapes of the painting, um, identify how much um, chroma or neutrality is to that shape, and kind of start with an overall underpainting. Um, but it really breaks you out of the idea of this color goes here, this color goes here, and we end up with this really kind of mingling, um, mingling of colors. And um, the exercise is, um, it, it's not meant to be a great painting. It's not meant to say this is gonna be a, an awesome painting. Um, I actually approach it with no drawing, just looking at the basic shapes, thinking about what those colors are and what their sort of tonal value and chromatic value is, um, and then just set out straight to painting. Um, so again, it's a, it's a fun exercise to break out of um, drawing everything too perfectly, putting in all that detail, rendering all the stuff that doesn't make for a, a better painting, um, but it will help you look at color relationships, it'll help you uh, judge tone more um, readily. If you want to paint more expressively, this is a great exercise to get your brain thinking in a more poetic, creative way rather than a duplication of what you're looking at way, um, which is something I think most of us are trying to uh, do in our painting is just become more painterly. Um, so have fun with the exercise and here we go. Okay, so this is, um, it's just a simple exercise and it's meant to be quick, it's meant to be loose, it's meant to be free. And it's a, really a way of thinking about all these colors mixing and mil mingling in that first wash to fully delineate the idea of coloring in a painting and to really just make sure we get these color relationships kind of mixing and mingling, which was one of the main things about what we did with, with the demonstration. So um, again, exercise, just fun, nothing, this isn't something you wanna sell or, you know, it's a completely personal idea of the exercise. And what I'm gonna do is you know, it's kind of the same thing as working top to bottom, but we're just working all over, right? So in, in this type of approach, we're establishing all of the sort of color relationships, um, and we're going to change those mixtures as we work. So I'm going to get thinner, I'm going to get thicker. The things that I want more chroma in, like in this pear scene, for instance, it's, you know, I'm really more concerned about getting that nice red that's going to glow. Um, and... Um, we're gonna just kind of move through it. So I'm, it doesn't take away the idea of background, foreground, middle ground. I'm just gonna control those with the chroma rather than so much with the tone. Um, and there's a lot of heavy shadows. So um, basically the first wash establishes all the color relationships. The second wash, once it dries, is gonna be, you know, basically chopping those shapes apart from each other with the shadows. Um, and again, this is not, perfect. It's not about trying to be like, um, it, it, it's a freeing exercise to make sure that all those colors are really mixing and mingling on that first wash without too much concern of separation. So, um, and, and again, I'm not going to draw. I'm just going to think about that shape and look at it. So the, you know, edge of the building kind of comes down here and creates basically this sort of shape over here. And I'll just get my blue sky in there. Um, and I'm going to have to move quick to make sure, because I do want things to connect and mix and mingle. Think about where that's coming down there. Now I'm going to come right into that sort of pale ochre business. And I, you know, I've got that shape established, but I really just, I do want it to connect in, you know, in, in a sense. And um, you know this, if it if it needs to be thinner, I'll, then I'll I'll just wash some water in that to get that nice highlight on the front of the building. Um, you know maybe I would negate a window or if I felt like I could pull that off. 
we're coming down there. Now it's time for the um, that sort of red. Uh, so I'll grab some red and a little bit of pure old orange. And this is going to be thicker than what's here, but because I want more chroma, so it's 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 thicker to make sure it really kind of stands out there, but it, it's not too thick where it gets cakey. And as I see that start to run in, I may say, oh, you know what? Actually, I need to get that deeper. So I'll, I'll just drop in this little bit of deeper red in there. And maybe I'll switch to sort of a bluishy purple with some, you know, just to get some of this underneath stuff here kind of going. And I know this is going to be the street coming out here. Maybe I'll leave a little bit of an edge for where that curb is just to, okay. So that's basically it. Like that's the beginning of the exercise is just getting all of these colors in there thinking about them in a color way without thinking of exactly where everything ends. So it kind of takes away that idea of structure because now when I come in to paint the actual painting, I'm going to get all these really neat sort of chromatic overlays and glows and things. Um, so we're going to blow dry this so it dries quickly and then we'll move into the, the, the step two. So it's, it reinforces a few things. One, it reinforces the idea of changing your color mixes consistency as you're working through. Uh, it delineates things as objects and really just, if you were had cataracts and were going blind, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for just blocking in those shapes with color. Um, and this is something I do more on this type of front lit scene. So this isn't applicable to everything necessarily but it's applicable to this kind of front lit scene. Um, now, oh, I actually forgot that tree, so this is probably still damp, but if I wanna get this, a little bit of that lighter green, um, you know, before this dries completely, I may put just some of this in here to get some bits that will be, you know, highlights of um, stuff that will happen later. So that's just getting, you know, this will give me some, some that's gonna blend into that just some soft edges to, to make sure I get some of those highlights in that light green that's happening back there. Okay. I can drop in some of these really abstract Everything, everything abstract, everything. <laughs> okay, so that takes care of that distant shape. Now I can worry about my building and um, I'll establish the shadow side. Basically a little burnt sienna and some cobalt blue. A little yellow ochre. There we go. One more yellow ochre. Actually a little purple. There we go. And, uh, now, regardless of where that color goes, I'm going to put this in where I think it needs to be. All right, so even though this is bleeding over, and, and the, the real fun of this exercise is that you have to really look at what you're doing, you know, because it, it, I don't have any pencil lines, so... I'm just saying, okay, this, uh, this building is more in shade on this side, going back. Um, and I'll take that same mix and say it's coming through. Does that come through? I guess about here. And this paper is a little difficult. I'm, I'm on smooth paper, but again, I don't really care. You know, there's, there isn't a whole lot of, I'm really just now practicing the idea of cutting around these, um, you know, cutting out the shapes into the, the light that I left. You know, maybe there's some Dancy Rayleigh stuff there. Uh, but it, it definitely frees you from trying to be too perfect. Um, and you'll actually end up with something that's really probably fairly interesting. 
Okay, so now I have to worry about underneath that red awning. So now to really make that pop, I know I have to come much juicier, thicker pigment. And I'll think about where that goes. Comes across, there's a little bit of a shorter awning. I can even put in the idea that there's a shadow here. So, you know, I'm really just thinking about looking at the shapes and some other I'm just gonna make a mess here and I, I'm just gonna keep it really simple so um, I think I'll even just come and dry brush and say there's a and this is really freeing so here's that little light post there because you're, you're totally removed from the idea of trying to make things look like things other than the idea of what's that pattern that I'm looking at and making those marks. Um, now I'm gonna come in with, come in with a, I, I want that even darker. So I'm gonna use green and red, and this will be very creamy. And, um, I'm gonna put in a secondary dark here and just sort of dance that around. And, you know, as I start to put that in, you could see like that was dark. Now this is way darker, you know? So um, put this flower box in, maybe there's a little bit more dark on this window. And now I'll worry about what's happening with the tree. Um, so, you know, I have some of that light green there and I don't want this to get, you know, too dark of a green, you know, this is a front lit kind of pretty day. Um, but I'm basically gonna come in and put in the shadow, you know, the, the shadow idea of that tree. So um, maybe I'll just dry brush some stuff in there, have that coming off of the side of the painting. And I'm gonna come in with water now and just soften some of that to, you know, kind of melt into that undercolor that's already there. So I'm gonna keep those highlights, add a couple darks, and now I'll come and connect this, the shadow shape in, which is gonna be, you know, a maroonish, not, not as dark as what's underneath, but still, you know, I still want contrast against And we're, that's about it. You know, so it, um, maybe I would, it, it wouldn't even be important though, because like this is, it's giving me the information that I'm looking for is how are these darks, this all got blurred out here, um, but how are these darks connecting? Uh, sorry, my uh, Zoom sent a, a message. But how are these darks connecting? and? You know, without drawing, I can build a believable uh, interpretation of what's going on there. And then also I'm like, oh, shit, all this stuff that maybe I thought was important to me for some reason or not is totally not important anymore. You know, like even, you know, the idea of, oh, well, there's other stuff happening here. Yeah, well, do I really need to get, like how much detail do I need to really tell the story? Maybe I would come and, you know, dry brush some stuff. Um, but the more I worry about trying to bring in those intricacies and things, the more I'm going to lose just the spirit of what I was looking at. Um, so, you know, the idea of, you know, the people or anything like that, like, you know, I, I, I don't need them. Like, it's just, the, 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 this isn't helping me with what's happening in my story of this light thing. But, you know, I mean, you could populate them if you feel good about it. Um, but he's not going to be in shadow. He's actually going to be in light. So I might put him in dark just to get the, the basic silhouette form correct. And then come in. 
and bring light on him, which would give me information for, you know, if he's about that tall and there's a, a guy here and he's... Saying, hello, sir, welcome to Shea Magel. And again, you know, it's just a sketch, so I, I can just come in and dance around with some gouache. And I, this is so fun, because you're just in here playing, making marks, doing stuff. And I'll probably end up with something that's fairly cool um, as a quick sketch. Is it a finished painting? No, but it's an exercise to just get into the idea of establishing these color patterns and really reducing things down to its most basic shapes. Okay. Um, so anyway, that's the exercise. Approach it without a drawing. Think about just first you're establishing, like there's no white left. You know, I, I would have, well, if I was doing this again, I was being a little more careful. I probably would have left white in here in the window just because that's the only real like spot of white that I'm getting. Um, but then again, it's just a sketch. I can come back in with some gouache and bring that white back. Um, and now I can also learn from this and say, well, man, that red was so bright. Now it looks so muted. So what does that mean? That means I have to go really strong if I want that red to stay red. So it sort of works because I got dark enough underneath, but it, again, it's, it's building that contrast. So if this was super, super bright red, I probably wouldn't have to go quite as dark under here to make that red really pop. But it still feels like a nice sensitive, you know, it, it still will, can, you know, work in what it's doing there. But anyway, that's it, that's the, that's the gist. And then if I want to put in the idea that there's this curb here, you know, um, I would probably, if I was doing this, <laughs> well, now it's done. So this is gravy, right? So this is what's important. Everything else isn't important. So this could live by itself fine. If, if you're not doing cars really all that great, fine. You don't even need them. It still works. Um, oops. Oh, God. Put a man on the horizon. <laughs> Anyway, we're, we'll, we'll make this into a, into a car back here. So, you know, we can say there's the idea of a car back here, whatever. You know, maybe there's a guy on a bicycle. He's, whatever, I don't know what he's, why that's there. But. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So all that stuff doesn't matter. The idea of getting those colors, mixing and mingling and Again, it's that delineation. So having this idea of like where that, that uh, red from the awning is, is blurring into the background there, um, where the, 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 the haze of that building. So that's giving me a, a, this sort of chromatic edge. Um, it wouldn't be as interesting if I didn't have all those kind of color overlap and things happening. So, you know, it's, you know, like I said, most of the time you think you're, you're being smart about how careful you're being about things and really what it's end up, gonna end up doing is robbing your painting of being interesting. So anyway, I hope you can play with this. Um, because you know, it's a simplification exercise, but when I would come to do the painting, I would have my pencil lines, I would have my information of, I'm still gonna ignore it. Like I'm, 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 I'm gonna aim for it, but I'm not gonna try to stop this wash perfect, stop this wash perfect. It's really this idea of a loose connective, connecty kind of stuff. And again, that happens in this type of painting that doesn't happen in a backlit situation as much. Um, but you know, six by nines, it takes 10, 15 minutes maybe. Work quick, don't be precious. You know, just think about your composition sky, building, awning, ground, like it, it's not, and, and it, it's a wonderful way to start to look at complex scenes and break them down into attainable, interesting paintings that aren't uh, going, going too far, you know, and there's a time and a place for that, you know, as you develop and as you start to, you know, get better and more control, 
the, it's going to happen automatically, but it starts from a place of simplicity. And, you know, as you become more confident and you become more sort of careful, not careful in the fact of like painting like this, but careful in the, in the, the judgment of those relationships and those color patterns and things, then you'll start to get stuff that will really start to, you know, really sing um, and, and, you know, be super impressive. So anyway, anyway, here's a look at the finished exercise. And for more in-depth watercolor demos and lessons, see my full library at danmarshallart.com.